People are capable of the most incredible feats. I believe every single one of you has a wealth of untapped potential, and within the episodes of this podcast, you'll hear stories of people tapping into theirs. My wish is that you rethink, rediscover, and re-evolve what's been inside of you all along. It is said that you die two times. The first is when you take your final breath, the inevitable flatline, and you lapse into the great unknown. But the second time is the last time your name is spoken. How you choose to live your life and who you decide to become determines the time between those two deaths. It is time to step up. The possibilities are endless. You are worthy and you are limitless. Hey guys, welcome back to this episode of The Limitless Podcast. So Harris Butt is a personal trainer, a powerlifting tutor, and a mentor based in Wellington, New Zealand, my good old hometown. He's a national champion powerlifter, <laughs> which is funnily enough an event that actually made breaking news in his home country, Pakistan, which I find hilarious, but also awesome. He's got a passion in mental health, and he incorporates that both in his training with people one-on-one, but also in his messages through social media channels. So Harris, my friend, welcome, brother. Thanks for having me, Nick. No worries, man. So what I'd love to hear from you to begin with is really just your journey from childhood, discovering yourself, onto how you became a personal trainer, and I'd love to hear your story about becoming a powerlifting national champion because I think there are so many mindset stories in that that will just be so valuable for others to take away. Totally, man. Um, so I guess when I was I was born in Pakistan and uh, throughout growing up, I was always very athletic and, and I guess physically or genetically gifted towards uh, athleticism. Lucky. <laughs> yeah, sure. So most things like uh, came pretty easily when it, kind of, when it came to that area. Yeah. And throughout sort of school, I just developed a uh, innate ability to be pretty good at most sports that I tried. Mm-hmm. Uh, going, finishing school, uh, I was like, you know, what do I want to do? I was kind of a computer nerd, but it wasn't really something that I saw myself doing in my spare time, but I saw myself working out and training and people asked me for advice when I was doing that kind of stuff. So I was like, hey, you know, I could do this for a living. So I became a personal trainer. Nice. Uh, and then once I sort of started working in the business, because I was so heavily invested into it, and, and when I you know when I put my mind towards something, I can develop and guard pretty quickly. So uh, my business as a personal trainer just flourished like crazy in the first six months to a year, beyond my expectations. That's um, so cool. And at the same time, uh, so did my. Um, powerlifting. So I got into powerlifting almost at the same time I got into starting my personal training career. And because it both sort of grew at an alarming rate, I didn't really have to worry about uh, um, all the setbacks because I didn't have any. <laughs> you know, I just avoided that pretty much. Um, and, and, you know, like when you avoid setbacks for a long time, things are going to build up and you're going <laughs> to lose the ability to, to deal with some shit. Yep. And, uh, um, I remember um, I had some injuries, uh, so I, I, I couldn't train as well. I had some uh, business uh, misfortunes, with, which I didn't know how to handle, yeah. both emo- emotionally or uh, like as a businessman. Mm-hmm. Um, and and through that, I, I was like, holy shit, like my mental health is now suffering. And now so is my business and my training. And it all is coming crashing down. How can I, well, what, what am I supposed to do here? Yeah. I think that's um, a, a really relatable like, take-home message for a lot of people because it's the same thing when you go into entrepreneurship. And this was the case for me was I was really good at most stuff I attempted when I was a kid. Mm. But when it came into entrepreneurship and everything rises and falls on your efforts, now it gets real scary. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, for sure. And I think, um, so there was the powerlifting thing. I, because I was, I got into it and, and I grew pretty quickly. I, so every competition that I did, I won. Um, <laughs> I hate you. 
<laughs> and the the funny thing was like when I first got into it, I didn't even know like how good I was. I was just sort of just turning up and just doing whatever I did, and and uh, then just carrying on. Uh, and I remember um, prepping for nationals, and I think maybe a month before it, they put up uh, a stat sheet of all the top lifters, and I was in the top three. I'm like, oh, shit, I have a, I have a wow. chance of winning. Um, and it was uh, the competition itself was actually really cool. So uh, we had the top three lifters in my weight class, so the under 93 kilo mm -hmm. um, weight class. And what ended up happening was through we didn't have the exact lifts in either category, squat, bench, and deadlift. Yeah. But on the second attempt of the deadlifts, we all had the same total. <laughs> oh my god! So it was literally the third pull was the make or yeah. break. That, that was it, and <laughs> and I per so the way the way it worked was I I purposely put up a higher weight so they had to match it. Yeah, and the reason I could do that was because I was lighter than both of them. Yeah, exactly. So, so because I was lighter, and even if I didn't pull it, I would still win, right? On your on your Wilkes coefficient. On my Wilkes score, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I did that, and they were like, "Oh shit!" Because <laughs> at, at, at that kind of level, no one really thinks about doing that. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? Fuck it! I'm gonna just put out the stress. <laughs> did you? Were you confident that you could do it? Oh, I had not, not, no, 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 like I was real fifty fifty about it, right? Yeah. So I had just pulled two sixty five uh, on the deadlift, and I was how old? Uh, were you? Because you were a junior, I, right? Yeah, I was um, 21. That's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so I pulled 265, and then I put a number of four, 275. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> and um, so the, f the first two guys, they both um, dropped their lifts. And I was just so happy because I knew I, like, I just took it out at yep. this point. So I didn't even care if I got it or not. <laughs> but I, I still really, really wanted it, right? Yeah. So I tried. So I, I lifted and it got off the floor and I was grinding for like what's, what I felt like was like 20 seconds. <laughs> but it was really five. And funny, the funny thing is I like, I low-key pooped my pants. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. I keep putting a hundred <laughs> I was so committed. I was so committed. I was like, I'm, I'm getting this. But, but, you know, I, I didn't even know until like afterwards. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I went to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember because at the same time I was, uh, I was like in the midst of like trying to figure my business out because it was like collapsing at around me, like getting into nationals yeah um, why was that just with your your time going towards your personal training rather than building your business or yeah yeah it was yeah. it was it was a bit of that and a bit mm -hmm. of like uh, other personal stuff that was happening at the same time yeah um and i i literally i flew up so i trained some clients in the morning i flew up after i trained them i competed and pretty much like 20 or 30 minutes after um, my last deadlift, I got an Uber back to the airport and I missed like the, the award ceremony because I was like so tight for time oh. to make sure I had enough money and shit. Yeah. Um, commitment. It was, it was a crazy day. Yeah. yeah. It was like work, get the shit done and then leave. And everyone was like, where are you going? I'm like, <laughs> <I'm gonna> go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's pretty much, um, my story and, and I think from there, like, it should just go worse and worse. Um, yeah. That was, like, the peak. And then uh, mentally, um, my business kept derailing. I more, got more injuries and my mental health suffered. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to uh, stop being a personal trainer, which is one of the hardest things that I had to do at the time. Because yeah. my, like, my identity was sort of around that uh -huh. uh, at the time. Uh -huh. um, because I couldn't train properly, you know, you, you, I couldn't use exercise as a way to heal my mental health yeah. as well. Remove that coping mechanism, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, I had to start finding other means and that's, I started looking at the books, mm -hmm. um, other people that sort of had went through the same thing. And, and I kind of realized like there, there isn't really much help out there. Like if I wanted, you know, like some strategies to do on a day-to-day -day basis, 
I have to go far and beyond yep. to find these things. And like, yep. it should be quite easily accessible considering how many people go through this on a day-to-day basis. What I'd like to know is, because I know a lot of people who, you know, get into a mental health funk and they just stay there for, you know, a long time. What do you think, what do you think it was within you that made you want to write that really quickly? I think it was, I've always had a desire to, to, to get better and prove to myself that I can do better in, in, in any way, one way or another. That's awesome. Even if it's just one small thing on one day, yep. right? And I just noticed, like, it wasn't that I was just standing, but I was getting worse, right? Which is, yep. which is not where I want to be. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was like, I don't, I don't care what I do. I just, I'm just going to do something um, to get better. And I know I can do more and do better. So I just started working on one thing at a time um, and just started building on blocks. And I just had to trust the process and, and just go with it for a while, even though it felt like shit at the beginning. It always yeah, does. Of course. Yeah. Cause it's so confronting as well. Right. Like the, I think the whole understanding that really it's, it's on you to make sure that your mental health is, you know, is really good. And like you were saying, even though there seems to be support around, it's just not in the way that it's needed. Mm, 100%. Mm. So where did I you think, start off with that journey? You said you read some, started reading some books. Um, what books did you start reading and like, why those? Were they just any book that like you were saying you just wanted to do anything to, to take that step or were they recommendations or something that you, you'd heard about before? Uh, so a few I heard about before, um, mm-hmm. and I, I remember going into, um, I was going through the internet and I'm like, well, I want to learn more and, and get better at this and, but I didn't know where to start off. Mm-hmm. So I did some research and I found, um, a book called, uh, Mindset by Carol Dweck. Mm-hmm. And it basically explains the difference between a uh, a growth mindset and, and I guess a non growth mindset, like a fixed mindset. Yeah, like a fixed mindset. Yeah. That's that's what she framed it yeah. as well. Um, and I remember going when I first started reading this book. I'm like, well, this is pretty obvious. <laughs> like, you either want to get better or you don't. Mm-hmm. Whoop de do. <laughs> How enlightening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. first, first few chapters of me was like this is just this is why am I doing this why am I? but I kept reading right yeah. I'm like surely there's more yeah and I <laughs> the funny thing was as I was reading more I was getting more angry at the book not because <laughs> I was like disappointed but it was revealing things about myself that I didn't know before and yes. I was like shit yes. I've got a fix? No, I can't. Fuck, I have a fixed mindset. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it wasn't like all the time in these small areas that I didn't want to have a fixed mindset, but I did. Yeah. And, and that was just like an eye opener for me. Mm-hmm. I'm going, this is some pretty simple shit to like, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, I have to think about some stuff now. So thanks, Carol. You have just fucked my life up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and I remember reading it through all the way to the end and, and like my brain was like, whoo, like, yeah learned all these possibilities That's and awesome. that was, yeah that, so that was like the gate um and then i was like okay there's there's more things i can do so i started doing more things i was very conscious of the words that i use how i communicated with myself how i communicated with others yeah um and around around the, the same time i was so i became a tutor um for personal trainers and because a, part, a big part of what i have to do is mentor others and, and communicate properly with others yeah I really had to learn how to communicate in a way that was purposeful. So everything I said had a purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, And when you, when you're talking to people that are influenced by what you say, um, you have to be very careful on how you word certain things because if you say it the wrong way, even if you have the right intentions, it it can go wrong. And I think it's quite powerful that that started with your own, uh, you know, the way that you were talking to yourself initially moved on to how you speak to other people because I think that's one thing that a lot of people miss is they can be amazing communicators when they're on a stage or one-on-one or through like mentorship, but Mm. their self-communication is negative and it's just such a hard hole to get out of. Yeah, man. 
I yeah, I, I remember um one day I was just I was like like in the midst of the depths of when everything was going wrong. Yeah. And I was I was like in tears. And I was like trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. And, mm-hmm. Like I was having these all these negative like um, self talk moments, right? Yeah. And I was just wallowing in it. And like once I sort of I was still in the state, but not as intensely. I was like, man, what am I? What am I doing? This isn't how I should be talking to myself at mm-hmm. all. Um, and I, once I once I realized that, I was like, well, okay, how should I be talking to myself? And and it just sort of came about through um, trying to figure out how I can change my behavior through how I communicated to myself, and then how I then actioned those things as well. Yeah. And and I think um a big thing that sort of came about through that was trying to build on self-efficacy. Yep. Nice. Um, and I remember looking into what it was at the beginning. I'm like, that sounds like way too simple and way too easy. This, this, this can't really be an actual thing that works. Uh, but I guess, I guess what, like what self-efficacy really is, is just doing small things mm-hmm. and building upon small wins. So you can, um, grow without sort of worrying about all the, the big picture. Yeah, because self-efficacy is all about building like a positive feedback loop, right? So that in the beginning, you kind of have to talk yourself a wee bit into it. But once you've built that feedback loop, it's almost like you're you're naturally in growth mode and you're naturally in growth mindset, right? Yeah, yeah, that's mm. it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, I, and I was like, okay, I'll give this a go. I'll try it with like the easiest thing. So I was like, okay, all I'm going to do to start this off is just wake up first thing in the morning and make my bed every day. Nice. That, uh, that was like, that's all I focused on. And, and I did that for a month. Mm-hmm. And when, when I, like, because making a bed isn't a specifically difficult thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Right. But it still requires some effort and thinking and focus. And in discipline. The morning. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I just thought, you know, if I could do this thing, it could set up my day work really well. I've seen a a YouTube video um, and it was like a, I can't remember who it was. It might've been the, what's his name? James Mattis. He's like the head of, I can't remember what his his title is, but some, he's like the the dude at the head of the military who is like the, you know, Donald Trump's military assistant or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was him and he had a speech about, you know, how to really start believing in yourself. And it was that exact same thing was in the morning, no matter how shit you feel, make your bed and you'll, at the beginning of the day, you've already achieved something and it can or it can only build from there. That's, that's literally it. That's, that's the root of how self-efficacy is born. That's cool. Um, you do the small things and, and you have to make sure you, you celebrate the small one that you have. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter how big it is or how small it is, just celebrate that you did the thing that you're supposed to do. Yeah. And so that was the first thing that, that I started doing. And then the second step was uh, building and making some positive momentum in the morning Yeah. to carry me through into the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way I did that was basically, and, and it sounds super weird, well, super cliche, but I literally put on some music and just had a boogie in the morning. That's gangster. I like that. Yeah. Every every single morning, I just I just put on some music and just and I just dance. I saw your um, Instagram video was it yesterday, and you'd uploaded yeah. just like just having a dance, and I was like, "Fuck, that's cool!" Like, because me and my wife, when we have small wins, because you know, like the world of entrepreneurship is always up and down, and yeah. some days you only have small wins, but whenever we come across a small win, we both just do a happy dance. Yeah, fuck yeah, man! You have and to celebrate this. It makes, it makes you feel so good. Um, and if you're like tired or lethargic or you're feeling shitty, it mm. makes such a difference, but yeah, sounds super cliche, but is effective. So it's not cliche at all. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and the funny thing about it is when you're not feeling great, when you're, when you're feeling, um, sad or depressed, the last thing you want to do is move and express yourself, right? Yep, Exactly. But that's the thing that you need to do. It's <laughs> so funny. Like the thing that you're resisting is often the thing that you need to do to make things better. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can learn to do 
I guess, this moving ourselves, expressing ourselves, because technically the only barrier to us doing this is ourselves. Once we learn this pattern of um, understanding and accepting resistance and then moving forward anyway mm-hmm. through this, uh, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, easier thing to do than other, other things in life. Yeah then we can learn and apply that to more challenging and more difficult uh, concepts or areas where we have to push through um, any, any resistance. For sure. So I'll, I'll literally wake up, make my bed, put on some music, have a boogie, and I'll just be in a better mindset to take on the rest of my day. That's gangster. I like that. Do you ever stop and have a boogie during the day? Yeah, sometimes. So it will depend on how my day is uh, 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 measured. So if I have a super long day, halfway through I'll either have a boogie or I'll either meditate. Nice. Um, depending on my energy levels and depending on what I need to focus on. If I need to channel my energy in a very focused way, I'll probably meditate. Yep. Uh, but if I just need to just have enthusiasm and just be super energetic – for either myself or my class, mm-hmm. then I will just have a boogie and, and just get amped up. That's awesome. And so meditation, this is a, a pretty hot topic at the moment. Um, I had yeah. a podcast interview earlier in the week with a guy who um, is a mindfulness and meditation coach as well. And everyone has their own style of meditation and how they discovered it and why they find it so effective. Um, I'm the same as you. If I find I need to channel energy to a specific thing i find meditation so effective um mm-hmm. i'd love to know how you first came across meditation and how you practice that and again like just your journey with meditation because like, same with everything so many people think they need to be perfect first day uh, but it's not the case <laughs> at all <laughs> especially yeah. when it comes to stuff with you know dealing with trying to eliminate thoughts and really be in that that oneness and that that, that centered sort of feeling. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, man. So I remember uh, when I, when I didn't know what meditation was and I heard people talking about it, I'm like, what is this? That doesn't make any sense. What is this woo woo bullshit? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and I remember sort of looking more into it and, and I, at the beginning I used it as a means to calm myself before I went to sleep nice. because my brain was just going on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And when you have something like that, it's so hard to sort of tune down and sleep. Yep. Um, and I re- and I sort of understood the concept of meditation pretty quickly. I was lucky enough to sort of uh, embark upon, I don't know how I even found it, but I, but I realized what it was for me. Yep. And meditation for me is not letting go of your thoughts but focusing focusing them on a specific area which you can control so you can then manage what's going on inside your brain. That's awesome. And I love how there is not a single definition for meditation and one person's exact perfect way of meditating and feeling like it's so effective is someone else's yeah. like least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that's, that's the cool thing about it because if you, if you think of it as a, this is the, the way and the only way, then I guess that's, you, you've, you've lost the idea of what meditation is. Yeah. And that my first ever um, <laughs> meditation I tried to do was like some like fucking astral projection guided <laughs> meditation where I sit down and put headphones in and here's some guy talking about like, imagine this golden glow moving up. I was like, what the fuck? I can't even, I can't picture that. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> and it was so like, whack. I was, like, it's, and, and, it, and it sort of puts you off meditation, right? Cause you're, yeah. you're like, what? <laughs> Whereas now I could really get into something like that. But at the beginning, like, holy shit, I thought it would be easier to do a guided meditation to figure out how to do it. But yeah. oh my God, like it was, it was, whack and so what i first noticed was probably similar to you um and i can't remember where i heard the concept but it was almost like um because i i i I struggle with getting to a point and i still do getting to a point where i can shut off all thought and just be blank i can't 
I just can't, I can't do that. I've got a really active mind. Um, whereas my form of meditation is more like sitting in my thoughts, not letting them, you know, really not thinking into them, just letting them kind of float along and then coming to an understanding of what I need to do next. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty hard to do. So nice, yeah. Matt. Yeah. It takes a, it's, it's like we were saying, or I mentioned before, the thing that we resist the most is often the thing that we need to do. That's yeah. like, yeah. Meditation is that for me. Like I, I've had some crazy meditation experiences where I literally have come away being like, I fucking sorted out the problem that I've had for months. Like I've been thinking about it and trying to create like a, a plan or like some goals around it and create some strategy. And all I really needed was a 10 minute meditation where all my thoughts were just like, here you go. This is the answer. Yeah. And so yeah. that for me is I just need to continue practicing meditation because I understand how important it is yet. It's the thing I resist so frequently. Yeah. Tell me about it, man. I think it's a, it's such a funny thing where you, you want to, you, you want to focus and, have uh, a specific thing that you need to do, but you know how to get there, but you avoid the actual way. You want to you take a shortcut, but there yeah. isn't. <laughs> yeah. Every single time. And so what I'd like to uh, get to know as well is because what you do at the moment is really mentoring people and establishing their own personal training businesses, right? Yep. How have you started to include you know mental health and positivity and mindfulness and meditation within your mentoring with other people great question so the first thing i i always do is um i ask questions uh and and the questions that i ask are based on what someone else wants so i go cool so what what is your ideal business or what is what do you, what do you, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. And they tell me what they want. Then I go deeper into whatever that is. I want to feel like I'm running my own business. Cool. What do you want to do that? I want to feel more feel, feel fulfilled. And so I just keep asking questions to dig deeper into you know, the root cause of whatever yeah. it is they want to do. And once you get into the root cause, then you can, that's when you can break it down and be like, okay, so the reason you want to do this is because you feel this way. And the reason you feel this way is because of the things that happened in your past. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Exactly. Um, and the things that affect that are some are things that are controlled by external factors, which are going to be part of a thing, but you can't focus on them because you can't control them. Uh-huh. But they can be influenced through the things that you can control. So let's focus on what you can control. That's epic. Mm-hmm. I love that. And yeah. I think um, when working with people in that sort of situation, do you find that sometimes they weren't even aware of the, the underlying cause that like they might've had a surface reason, but once you start digging deeper, they're kind of like, holy fuck. I didn't even realize that was, that was why. Yeah. hundred percent. And it's oh, cool. It's, it's sort of like, Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's why I'm here. <laughs> the light bulb moment. Ah, oh, that's cool. I love it. And I, and I remember having a conversation where someone like, you know, you just like you got your testimonial from, um, uh, your mentoring I, I had a student message me he's like hey man I just had a light bulb moment based on this and I'm like cool awesome now go do something with it yeah exactly you're like holy shit I've impacted someone's life but if they don't go do something with it like it's lost yeah exactly and I, that's that's what I worry about the most because I know once you sort of ignite that spark you're just so overwhelmed by that feeling and, and that, that realization, but yeah. you almost forget to action it out. <laughs> exactly. You're like, wow, I have a revelation. Okay, cool. You, you've had it. Move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, that would be what, one question I'd like to dive into is how do you have that self-awareness that when you do have those realizations of this is what I really need to do, how do you make sure you action it? So the, the funny thing with me is when I, when I, I'm always questioning everything and nice. it's, and it's a good thing, but it's also extremely frustrating at times. So you probably, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so someone will say something to me. I'm like, why do you think that way? Why, what, what, what made you process information for you to come to that conclusion? Yeah. 
And and then I do the same thing with myself. I'm like, shut the fuck up, Harris. Just go to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and I'll, I'll I'll keep questioning things, and I'll go, huh, that's interesting. Why do I, I just had that thought? So, um, an example was, I was uh, teaching someone something, and I I was getting extremely frustrated. I'm like, hang on, why 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 are you getting extremely frustrated, Harris? And then I was, so I, there's an internal dialogue that goes in my head, right? I love it. And I go, cool. Well, the reason I'm feeling extremely frustrated is because the student isn't just grasping what I'm trying to give them. Well, why, why do you think they're not grasping this concept? Well, I'm trying to explain it in this way. Okay, well, do you think you could explain it in a way that will help them understand better? And you know, your frustration is going to make it harder for them to get, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this this internal dialogue is just like happening constantly, <laughs> and I think that sort of helps my self awareness. Where I where I'm any anything I do, I, I almost go, "What made me do that thing?" Mm-hmm. Um, which which has helped me a lot through um, the conversations I've had or the actions I've taken. But it sometimes it can be a double edged sword where you dive into uh, overthinking things. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and that's something when I first started being conscious of my thoughts, I really struggled with n- tr- not trying to overthink things. Yeah. And cause when you, when you get to overthinking, especially if it's a negative thing, that's when you get into, I guess, a uh, very, um, you get into your own head. Yeah. And when you get into your own head, you can, you can, it can become very negative very quickly. Yeah. Very slippery slope. <laughs> yeah. Very slippery slope. And you can just stay there. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of when I, um, I, I read a book called the, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Yeah. Um, great book. And it sort of talks about, um, the feedback loop. Mm-hmm. Um, and the feedback loop is basically where you get anxious about something and then you're more anxious about the thing you're anxious about because you realize you're anxious about it. <laughs> yeah. And then you get pissed off at yourself because you realize you're anxious about something that's so insignificant. Yeah. And then you realize I shouldn't be mad, which makes you more anxious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so true, and I talked about right. this a little bit. Um, I can't remember. It was one of the you know one of the previous podcast episodes, but I uncovered this feedback loop that I've had for years that I didn't even know was there, and it was through that whole aspect. With I was sitting down with a friend um, who was taking me through this process, kind of like what you were saying before. You know, asking questions, taking off the layers, taking off the layers, taking off the layers getting to that real deep root cause, which I didn't even know was there myself. And it yep. was a pressure feedback loop that I would have established when I was a kid, putting pressure on myself. It wasn't imposed by others. It wasn't like parents giving me pressure, but it was just my own oh, pressure right? feedback loop. Yeah. From I'm, It was the yeah. same as you. I played so many sports when I was a kid. I remember looking back at like standing on the, you know, the, 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 the line waiting for the gun for running, I remember standing at the halfway line for football. I remember standing at the start of the pool for a swimming race, and just having so much anxiety because of the pressure that I put onto myself. Fast forward twenty years, and I'm still there with that pressure feedback loop that's been building and building and building. And then it comes to understanding, you're like, "Holy shit, I've had that there the whole time." And it was just that exact same thing you were saying. It was like a snowball effect of pressure where I put pressure on myself. So I felt pressure, which means I felt more pressure. Like it was just, it seems so fucking obvious when you like start talking about it openly, but you don't even realize it's there. Like with everything you're doing, it's, it's so funny. Yeah. It's, it's hilarious. Like when you, when you become obvious to it and then, and then every time it happens from this moment, from that moment onwards, you're like pause. Yeah. <laughs> it's like click Adam Sandler. Like, like yeah. what am I doing? What and, and I think, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I realized a lot of people go through that without realizing they do. Yeah. And exactly. I, then I was like, okay, how can we get out of this loop itself? So I, I stumbled upon, um, a, a, I guess a four step strategy, right? Mm-hmm. And, and the first thing you want to sort of think about is whatever you're feeling, uh, just, just accept it. Right. It's yep. like, it's like the elephant in the room. If you keep thinking about the elephant, you're going to keep seeing it. But you realize, you know, if the elephant's there and it's just doing its thing, then you can move on from it. Yep. And I think that's one of the hardest things is to 
be okay with the feeling that you're having. Yeah. Because if you spend more time and more energy trying to fight it, or just taking yourself for having it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's going to take time from accepting and moving forward. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's how we get into the loop where we're like, Oh, why do I, why am I feeling this way? I should, I shouldn't be. If you should, you're a human. <laughs> if you weren't supposed to feel certain things, then you wouldn't. You have right? a really, really fucking complicated mix of chemicals in your head. You're, it's okay to feel some emotions. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah. And even, you know, everyone has to be reminded of that. You know, we're like, I, like it, it spawns from when you're um, in, I guess, the caveman time. Mm-hmm. So when, you, when we were back, in those days when we have actual dangers of being eaten by a bear or starving to death, yeah. we had immense flight or fight responses to those dangers. Yeah. Now, as we evolve, we don't have those dangers themselves, but the responses are still just as strong yeah. and just as emotional. Mm-hmm. So when we don't realize that, when, we're, when we get the massive uh, jolt of anxiety when something happens, the brain is thinking we're in danger of being eaten or starving to death or something because exactly. the brain, the back of our brain saw things that were in that state. Exactly. But once we realize, hang on, my brain is just sending me signals for perceived danger, then I can go, okay, well, I'm not actually in that much danger right now. Mm-hmm. But my brain is thinking it is. And that's why I'm feeling a lot more anxious yeah. than I want to. And that's totally fine. Like it's a thing that's happening and it's pretty natural. And, and once you sort of tell yourself that and have that conversation, you can move towards the next step. It's so which cool. is just, it's just, Hey, like this is the thing. This is part of me right now. And let's just, let's just accept it for what it is. Yeah. Let's go. Cool. I'm feeling shitty, but when I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to feel shitty later on. Mm-hmm. I think um, one of the big things is just not judging yourself. Yeah. And and when you don't judge yourself, you can start learning and become familiar with the triggers that set those things off. Yeah. So I I remember for me, well, one of the triggers were having just a, a self doubt. Mm-hmm. And not realizing that self doubt is, you know, pretty normal, and yeah. you, you you can if every, everyone goes through it. Yeah, and if they and if they say they don't, they're lying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, everyone goes through it. Yeah. And then I realized, you know, this, this self doubt is just stemmed upon me not knowing what's going to happen in the future, and and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And then the last thing is just, well, okay, this is a thing. I'm not going to judge myself for it. I'm going to learn what it is and where it's coming from. And then the last thing I do is, okay, let's just keep going. What's yeah. what's the next thing I need to do? Yeah. Obviously, it's easier to say than done. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where you have to really be conscious of those thoughts and those feelings and emotions and realize when you're within those feelings, it's okay to feel depressed or sad or frustrated because those are natural human feelings that we all have and go through. Uh, but understand that those will pass as long as you don't fight them. Exactly. As long and as you don't fight them and as long as you're really committed to finding solutions and not yeah, living yeah. in space. Yeah, exactly. And you know when you're... I guess when you're uh, when you're in that state of feeling super sad, sorry for yourself, pretty depressed. Yeah, it's hard to find a solution for whatever the problem is when you're in that state because you just yeah. feel like it's like the world's ending around you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why it's important to create um, some positive uh, momentum. Yeah, and and that's why like moving and expressing yourself, like what we talked about before, is so so useful. And it's it's not something that's going to fix everything straight away, but it's something that's going to help you clear your mind, not be in that state. Yeah. So you can start thinking objectively about the things that you were feeling prior to. Exactly. I love that. And I think once you start thinking objectively, 
you can come up with uh, healthy solutions to whatever those issues were. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. That's cool, man. Um, I'd love to know what your aspirations are for the future in terms of where you see yourself moving forward. Um, I can really see you becoming, you know, a, a real thought leader in this area and someone, but just because of who you are and, you know, the people that you are surrounded with, someone who is able to really help a lot of people when it comes to mindset, especially in the fitness industry. I feel like so many people lead with, um, you know, fitness and how you look and calories and nutrition and miss this whole aspect of mindset and how important that is. So I can really see you, um, you know, doing big things in that area, but I'd love to know what your aspirations are and where you'd like to go from here. The main thing I want to sort of do is just spread the message of uh, mental health and movement, but also understanding the brain and using, you know, like, tools and strategies to help improve those and also really dive into men and mental health and depression. Nice. Because yeah. there's, there's so many underlying things that go on inside of, of, a, of a man's brain mm-hmm. through instinctual thoughts and feelings yeah. um, that we are, aren't talking about. Yeah. There's such a and stigma I'm, about, you know, being open about that stuff. I remember, um, I used to get bullied quite a lot at school and I'd get called, you know, like a fag if I cried because I genuinely got hurt or something. And it's just something that's in, so installed in society is, you know, just men really not being able to show emotions or if they do show emotions, then they're less masculine for doing so. Exactly. Yeah. I think every, every, every dude has wears masks. So. Yeah. Um, masks of masculinity so will wear a mask of strength or arrogance or the mm-hmm. joker mask or the, yeah. sp- uh, the athlete mask and all these masks sort of have are, are there just to front up the things that we're feeling but we're trying to hide them mm-hmm. and when we're in a vulnerable position where we have to take the mask off and it's not there for us that's when we sort of break down because we, <laughs> we've been hiding it for so long without even realizing yeah. the time. Floodgates open. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and if we don't understand um, that they're there and how to you know, embrace them in a healthy way, it can lead to being extremely destructive within yourself, within, through the people closest to you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that I want to get into because that's, that's still you know, a massive issue and you know, being able to speak uh, in other areas, um, in other conferences, and, and really opening those those gates to have those conversations um, it's for not just men, but for women that have men in their lives that they're trying to get through to. That's awesome. I really like that. So if people want to get to know you a wee bit more, follow you, see what you're all about, and continue to learn some of these amazing mindset tips from you, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? The best way is probably to follow me on Instagram. So mm-hmm. my tag is Harris with one R, fitness coach, or one word, Harris fitness coach. And I'll put um, it in the show notes. Awesome. And um, you can also just uh, find me on, on Facebook, just Harris Butt. And I post most things on Instagram and most of my videos and thoughts are on there. Seems to be um, where most people hang out at the moment. I, I, I'm yeah. definitely an Instagram fan. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's all just shifted towards Instagram. So that's where I do most of my, um, um, ex- that's where I express myself the most at mm-hmm. the moment. Nice. Um, and I think um, if I'm going to be doing more uh, seminars on mental health throughout next year, focus on just general mental health and men specifically and how, you know, if, even if you're a woman and you have men in your life, you can probably come to that as well. It's amazing. Man. To get a better understanding. So that's going to be going on. And, um, yeah, it's gonna. It's, it's, I just want to. Sh- I don't. I just want to share and make a change in in people's thinking. That's a, that's amazing. Whether whether one person or a hundred people, I think that's if amazing. someone takes it in and just goes, "I'm gonna action this," that's all. Fuck yeah, I love that. So, final question: um, If you were to go to, and I, I reckon you should, because you'd be fucking gangster at this. But if you were to go to along, uh, go along to, let's say, a boys' school, and here was this group of young men 
who were figuring out themselves, they're teenagers, they have all of these emotions going on. They're trying to really discover who they are and their place in the world. What would, you be, what would your advice be for these, these young men, you know, developing men, um, really all about that, that subject of, of mindset and it's okay to feel emotions? What would your advice be towards them? I would say, um, even if you think you have it figured out, you don't. Mm-hmm. And 10 years down the track, if you'll think you'll have it figured out, but you won't. <laughs> and you know, that is okay. Yeah. And, and then I would go, whatever you feel, you should feel, whether it's anger, sadness, whatever it is, it's okay to feel those things. And it's okay to express yourself in those ways as long as you are expressing yourself mm-hmm. and having those conversations, whether it's through to someone else or, or, or just yourself and understand that, Hey, everything you're feeling right now is as normal as the hair on your skin uh-huh. and everything that you're going to feel in the future and all the uncertainties that you're going to have are as normal as you know, the, the, the hair on your head mm-hmm. right and once we understand that we can go cool now if you want to become better and keep growing as a person don't worry about taking the big steps don't worry about the massive leaps that you see people taking which aren't massive leaps they just share those massive leaps yeah that's all baby steps so exactly. just worry about the baby steps the things you can do on a day-to-day basis and just be okay with the way you feel on a day-to-day basis that's cool man i really really like that um I think that's sage advice for anyone of any age of any gender. I think that's that's pretty spot on, man. Thanks. I think um yeah, a lot of like we get too complicated in, in, in the things we think. But we yeah. if we break it down, that's it's as simple as that. That's cool, bro. Respect. So again, Harris man, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Um I'm super excited to see, you know, you develop and you continue on this journey as you share the the message of mindset with other people, which like me, it seems to be something you're ultimately passionate about. And I commend you for that because it's a subject and a topic that needs to be shared with so many people and so many people need that message. So you're doing awesome work, man. Um, it's, a, it's an honor to know you and thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I, you know, any opportunity I get to um, spread this message, I'll take it. So thanks for um, reaching out to me and having this conversation. Legend, man. Talk to you soon. All right, sweet. See See ya. ya.